Hello there, Ray here, and I'm joined by Cheater Codes as well as Extra Rudda. We have invented a couple of new types of AFK fish farms for 1.16. We'll be showing you how they work and how you can use them. If you guys haven't heard, Mojang tried to nerf fish farms, so they want to give you some of the better loots. This includes stuff like enchanted books, enchanted fishing rods, enchanted bows, name tags, nautilus shells, saddles, as well as lily pads. But despite them making it almost impossible for us to automatically farm these up while being AFK, we've actually discovered a way to do it. And not only one way, we've discovered a few different ways to do it. So guys, welcome to the new AFK fish farms for 1.16 and above. So make sure you share this with other Minecrafters so they can learn about it. In the latest snapshot, which is 20W12A, they changed the way that fish loots are kind of obtained. So you won't get the treasure fish loots if the water source that you're fishing in isn't considered open water. This has some pretty strict requirements, which we covered in our last video, which includes an area that is a 5x5 five five around the center of where the bobber is. And all the blocks 2 meters above where the bobber is in that area have to be air or water. And all the blocks below the bobber, as well at the same level as it, have to be air or water. And you can only get it while your bobber is inside of a source block. And Cheater Codes and Random Games made this modded data pack which allows us to visually see when the bobber is in a good location that works. These little smoke particles here indicate that it is in a good location. If I would go ahead and throw it against the wall here, you can see since I'm not giving enough room around this, it does not show any particles. So it allows us to easily see if we designed the farm properly. So during our Twitch stream, we designed up four different types of AFK fish farms with other Protec members as well as the viewers. And if you guys don't know, right after the new snapshots come out, we have a snapshot stream where we allow everyone to join us as we test out building up the newest farms. And during those streams, we came up with some really cool AFK fish farms, as well as we found a way to actually get around Mojang's nerf on the AFK fish farm. Now, since we did publicly show this, others decided to showcase what we discovered. But before it got leaked, I did ask one of the Mojang developers if they were going to go ahead and fix this if I released a video about it. And they said it's very well possible, depending on how overpowered it is. So we'll let you guys be the judge of that. Chirico's looked into the Minecraft code, he is currently absent, on the exact requirements needed to have treasure enchantments given to the player while AFK fishing. The only real requirement was to have one water source with air 2 meters on all sides in a 5x5x5 five by five by five area, except for the water source. And at no point could there be any blocks inside this area other than air or water sources. So we went ahead and designed just that, just a water source, and gave it a try, and it indeed is possible to get the treasure enchantments from this, you can see we do get those little particles coming out of it. And you can see a fish just grabbed onto it as well. So it does work in order to catch fish and we still got the particles meaning that it is still counted as a treasure loot coming from this fish. While we're testing during the stream, I noticed something very strange. No, it's trapped on the boat and still. Wait, maybe, maybe we can use this. It technically it holds the fish in until you pull it in. It's the, that's no levitation potion. We continue to do more testing until we got to work. Okay, it okay. So if I put a boat on top of this water, when the fish will bite the bobber, it will actually pull the bobber underneath of the boat. I can turn our hitboxes by F3 plus B. So the bobber actually got pulled underneath of the boat. And technically the bobber is right here. Visually it looks like it's here, but that is not where it's really at. It's really right here where the particles are at. And I noticed that when I would reel in the bobber while it was stuck underneath of the boat, even if I completely miss the timing in which to pull the fish in, I was able to still get the fish as well as XP. So if I pull right now, you can see it got a fish and it got put into here. Even though I clearly missed the actual delay needed to pull in the fish. And while reading the Minecraft wiki about fishing, it actually says that if the bobber leaves the water at any point, the fish is stuck onto the hook despite it no longer being in the water. That means at any point you can pull the bobber in and the fish will still be on there or the loot in this case, which could be something really nice like enchanted books. And I shared this discovery with all the other technical members and we use this discovery in our AFK fish farm here. Now after we figure out exactly how we wanted to use this trick and to get fish out of it, we then need to figure out exactly what is the best time to pull in the fishing rod. So let's take a look at the first fish farm that we have over here. This one is based off of just throwing your rod into the water and hoping that when you reel it in, you'll have a fish. So to run this farm, we have a clock over here, which will determine if the player has a hook in the water or not. 
and we have a clock over here which will determine how long the player should let the hook stay in the water. So if I stand right here and I go into survival and I just hold down right click and with this type of fishing you're just hoping that when this trap door flickers that you actually have a fish on the line. Now this may seem completely random, but actually Cheater Codes ran a whole bunch of figures simulating millions of fishing attempts to figure out what is the best time to actually pull your reel in to actually catch something. So the best time to actually pull your fishing rod in without having no idea if there's a fish on it or not is exactly 95 game ticks, which is just under 5 seconds. And you can see the graph here, which shows how likely you are to get a fish to bite in a certain amount of time. And because there is between a one to four seconds wait time before a fish will bite, over four seconds will allow any fish in the area to come towards your bobber. After those four seconds are up, then it will depend on your fishing reel. You want to have lure three. That will give you the highest chance of getting a fish within the first few seconds after the wait period is over. Having luck of the C3 will have a higher chance of getting treasure enchantments. And unbreaking will make it last longer and mending will allow it to be repaired while you are AFK fishing as you will obtain XPs which will automatically repair it. Now if you decide to wait longer before pulling in your fishing pole, you're just wasting time because you could have pulled in and then had it recast and already trying to get a second fish. So you want to try to cast as fast as possible while still having the highest chance. And 95 game takes is the best time. So that's what we had over here. We have a clock which is set for that time. And this only counts as soon as the bobber touches the water. So right now, they'll start counting down. And we figure that all into this device here. So if we go ahead and we start to uh, spam click this, holding right click, and then you do F3 plus T trick, and this will automatically hold down your right click button. So once you cast, it's gonna start counting down. And once it reaches 95 game ticks worth of being in the water, it's going to put the trap door in front of you, which allows you to reel it in and then reel it back out again, automatically catching whatever fish was on it and then putting it back into the water to give his highest chance of getting another fish. The way we did this is by putting in a timer. This timer here detects when the bobber actually falls into the water. Then we can put it into some repeaters. As soon as it goes through all the repeaters and back out through here, which will come up here and flip this trap door, allowing you to reel in. When your guy is aiming at the note block, he's just going to be constantly tuning it trying to change it, he's unable to actually pull in the fishing rod. And when the trap door comes down, you're able to click on the trap door, pulling it back in again. So in a perfect world, your guy would be able to pull in and out without having any problems. Because you most likely will be running this on a server, and we are on a server right now. There is some latency between you and the server, and there's also lag. So we have a extra device over here, which can detect if the player happens to miss fire. And because the fishing rod's kind of like a T flip flop, it's either in or out, it's possible for you to constantly get in this loop of always being on the wrong cycle. So with this device here, we can detect if the player has not got the fishing rod into the water for a certain amount of time. Therefore, we know that he has failed to put his fishing rod in the water and will flick the trap door. Now, Cheater Code also figure out how often you would actually catch a fish by doing this method. And on average, it's 1,020 game ticks which is equivalent to catching a possible treasure enchantment every 51 seconds, which is pretty good considered that Mojang was trying to nerf doing AFK fishing to get treasure enchantments altogether. But by using our new discoveries, we are able to get way more chances of getting a treasure enchantment. And the reasoning is because the bobber here gets pulled out of the water and never ever has a chance to lose a fish because once it's out of the water, the fish is stuck onto the bobber. So at any time later, like an hour from now or two hours from now, I can still pull this in and still get the fish. So with this new way of doing it, we were able to re-crunch the numbers and figure out a new perfect time to pull in the fishing rod. Because instead of trying to pull in the fishing rod when the fish might be on the hook, we want to try to pull in the fishing hook when there is a highest chance of a fish already have bitten it and just waiting there. So if you look at this chart, the longer you wait, actually the higher chance you are to have a fish on it, which makes sense because over time, you'll have a 100% chance of getting a fish on your fishing rod. But there is a point in which it's no longer viable to really wait much longer. And that is the point of 330 game ticks. You can see the curve will level off there. And by testing all the different ticks, Cheater Codes came up with this graph which shows how the lowest point of this curve is the ideal time to pull in your fishing rod. So with 330 game ticks, it's pretty close to being about 17 seconds, which is quite long. So in this farm over here, we actually have enough repeaters to equivalent that much time. You can see it's a lot of repeaters, and it's a very similar setup as the previous one. 
where we will aim at this note block back here. And you have to be close enough so your guy can constantly right click on the note block. And as soon as the trapdoor comes down, your guy is able to throw out the fishing rod. And then you can sit here and spam. And after about 17 seconds are up, it's going to flick it again, allowing you to pull in the fishing rod. And unlike the other one where we have a kind of detection system to see if you would miss the tripwire, this system will constantly be flicking the trap door until it's sure that you actually have your fishing hook inside of the water. But this does use a lot of repeaters, which makes it really easy to illustrate how much time it is. But Extra went ahead and actually compacted it by using comparators. Here's a comparator clock. And Extra right up will demonstrate how to use this farm. He's sitting on the edge and he's aiming and he's right clicking. As soon as the bobber falls through the tripwire, it puts a signal into this comparator clock over here, which is equivalent to the time over there. Now, since we're only counting the time once the bobber falls into water, we have a little extra time for when the bobber is falling through the air. And we added that into the system as well. As soon as the time is up, it's going to send a signal over here, going to reset this clock here, and that will flick the trap door twice, allowing him to pull in the catch as well as put his rod back out there very, very fast. So if we sit here and watch, you can see he actually caught something. It's sitting down here, even though it visually looks like it's up there. And even though typically if he had pulled on any time now, he would lose a fish, but you can see he actually got it. And that was a treasure enchantment. It was actually a book. Look at that efficiency four book. That is so amazing, guys. There's other books of loyalty three. So, so it's extremely useful to actually build up this AFK fish farm. Now, because the bobber is constantly checking around its location, making sure that there is enough room around it to consider open water, even when it's down here, we need to make sure that it's at least one block away from any block, like this hopper here or any of this stuff here. And that's why we have a boat on top, so that when the bobber falls through, it's unable to fall any farther than this boat. And we have a hopper minecart here to pick up any loot that happens to land on the boat, have it all be put into this hopper and into this chest over here. Overall, the farm is very simple. We just got some redstone here. We got some clock delay, some more redstone. This furnace here just has item in it to send a signal around here. The water source being floating is probably the hardest thing to do. And Extra has a setup to show you guys how to do that. So to get the water to float, we're actually going to update the water in a certain way so it doesn't feel like actually flowing outwards. And Extra is gonna show you how to build that up. So we want to make sure that there is sticky pistons on all sides of the water. And we want to make sure the sticky pistons are trying to pull some slime blocks, which they cannot actually pull because they're going to be held back by these furnaces. So the source is going to be in the center. We're going to have sticky pistons with their heads actually touching all the water on all sides. So we have two for two sides, we got two other sides, we got one for the bottom. We don't need anything for the top because gravity prevents it from getting out. You go ahead and put the water source in there. Now you can remove the redstone blocks or power sources in any order you want to. And essentially it has removed all the heads of those pistons allowing you to then have a floating water source. Now there's other ways to make floating water as I showed like in the beginning. Once you have the floating water, you want to just leave it there and build around it without updating it. And that's exactly what we did over here for this farm here. And then you can put in a hopper minecart on top of rail. Make sure to remove the rail because it is a block. Then you can place a boat on top. Actually, I'll show you guys how to put the boat in. You want to place it onto the water in the center. Then he's going to attach it with his fishing rod. And then he's going to go underneath of it and he's going to pull it through the water source and make it land above it. And it'll sit right there on top of the minecart. It's perfect. So any items that will fall on top of this boat will be picked up by hopper minecart, this hopper, and be put into this chest over here. It's a little more complicated than, you, than like your old AFK fish farms. But with this, you'll at least get some treasure enchantments, which is amazing. And you can AFK this as long as you want. You won't take any like hunger damage or anything like that. And your fishing pole will be constantly be repaired by catching new fish as you will get the XPs because they kind of fly towards you when you AFK fish where the items themselves will end up down in the chest down below. Any extra XPs will actually end up in your inventory. So you will over time get tons of extra XPs. So it's kind of like an XP source as well. And besides getting the treasure loot from this type of fishing, you also get all the other types of loot as well. This includes raw cod, raw salmon, tropical fish, puffer fish, bowl, fishing rod on enchanted, leather, rotten flesh, leather boots, stick, string, water bottle, bone, 
ink sac, and trip wire hook. Now, if you don't care about the treasure enchantments, you can go back to using your old AFK fish farm. And if you guys want to make a simple AFK fish farm, this will work just fine. Uh, what you want to do is, I'll show you how to run this. You want to aim just above this wooden plate right here, and then a little bit inside of it, so make sure you aim actually into the wooden plate, and then right click, and then as soon as your bobber goes into the plate, it will go down, which allow you to click on the note block below it. And every time you catch a fish, the bobber's gonna go down, allowing the pressure plate to go up, allowing you to reel in because you're clicking on the plate, not the note block. And then your guys are gonna recast it because you're clicking on the plate, and then as soon as you touch it, it's gonna go back down again, and you just repeat the process. So yeah, it's super fast, AFK fish farm, not really much needed to actually pull this off. You can use other stuff besides a note block. You can use stuff like signs. Anything that your player will right click without releasing the bobber on the fishing rod. And all items will go into your inventory if you want to collect them in a chest. Put some hoppers underneath this as well as a chest. Now the final design we're going to show is this one of Extraretta's. He kind of simplified it by just having a bunch of delay here as well as a clock. You want to show how to use yours Extraretta. So his also has a trap door and a note block and a bunch of delay. The main difference is he doesn't really detect if the player misclicks. He just assumes that he always clicks. So he doesn't have like any tripwire here to check that. So let me go ahead and give it a try. So it's gonna flicker, allow me to pull in and release it. The downside is if you happen to get on the wrong kind of like T-flip flop or the wrong synchronization, you could be pulling in when you should be releasing and vice versa. But if you're playing something like single player, this type of setup might work for you. Now if you are a multiplayer, you might have some latencies with any of these designs. So a lot of these have um, repeaters that you can kind of change. So if you want this trapdoor to stay down longer, you can do that. So it'll stay down longer. That's even longer yet. So you can kind of mess around with that in case you're not able to click on it fast enough. Big thanks to everyone who joined our snapshot testing stream as well as all the ProTech members. It was a lot of fun turning these discoveries into actual AFK fish farms. And if you would like to be right there as we discover new things in the snapshot, make sure you turn on your notification as well as follow me on my other social medias. That's how I notify you guys of when they start. And amazing work to Cheater Codes who actually figure out the perfect timings for all these type of farms. And remember guys, the best way to support this video is just by sharing with other Minecrafters. So if you know of any Minecrafters who will be playing in 1.16, let them know about these new AFK fish farms so they can take advantage of them. And if you guys would like to see how to build these farms up, I will provide the world download in the description so you guys can see it block for block and you guys can choose whichever one you want to. I'd say this one's probably the best of all the designs for speed as well as compactness. And the redstone is fairly simple as well. And if you guys enjoy simple farms like this, I have an entire playlist showing off these type of farms, which you can find down below, as well as other crazy glitches that you can do in your own Minecraft survival world. We'd like to thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.